Welcome to today's episode of 15 Minutes of Bedlam. I'm your host, Chuck Bedlam, and today we have two very special guests. We have Keith and Carolina from Superior View Playhouse, and we are live here in Charleston at the Punk Rock Flea Party. Okay, so uh, with Superior Street Playhouse into Superior Feet Playhouse, how did that transition happen? Um, Superior Street. So, well, it has to back up a little. <laughs> um, she opened her store in our band's practice house in the dining room. So we moved all the equipment in the, another bedroom, and she opened her store. While I was in the band, I shortly left after that. Left the band. For creative I, differences. Sure. I was, I was placing orders and I wanted to get the Doc Martin boots into Columbia and I called the people that we had met in California when we were there so I knew the, the distributor of the Doc Martin boots and creepers and um, so I was ordering them and you know you you have to go through certain uh, legal loopholes like business licenses sure. and things like that right sure. and um, when I went to get one, they said, you're not zoned on Superior Street for a store. Do you okay. want to open a so store in our house? I, right. okay. I was said, no. shocked, but I ended up, he found a location on Rosewood, and that's how we ended up from mm -hmm. store one to store two. Um, and the lady that ran the liquor store that used to be in our store, she had got robbed for the third time. So they, her family said, you got to retire. No more running the liquor store on right. Rosewood. Right, okay. So we got, we were there the when next day. When we got that store, though, it was just one little caged, like chicken caged window. And um, we had to do everything in there. So it had like two-tone army green and beige walls. It was Urban development, horrible. baby. It just, you know, it was horrible. There was... Well, you, you made it beautiful. Yeah. You made it so beautiful in and fact, a welcoming place. And you guys had shows in there. I know you had uh, Subculture for North Carolina in there. I played a couple of shows in there. It was so much fun. It was Mito, so much Torpedo fun. Torpedo and uh, a couple of bands from Augusta. All of a sudden, you'd meet someone. They'd come play. And now you're like, wow, there's some of y'all in Augusta or wherever. Florence, right. Center, right. Rock Hill. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you guys expanded into North Carolina and five points five, five points, points that's yeah. right because From that's, to that's where of course I met my wife when she was working for you guys mm -hmm. so uh, you heard it here first come to the Punt Rock flea market to superior feet and maybe you'll find a soulmate yeah he did so uh, would have thought five points you guys stayed really busy there it was always a lot of people in and out of the store and you guys expanded oh, yeah. your merchandise yeah. it, it was a game changer right? Right. for you and for us too um suddenly we were on the map you know rosewood wasn't we never knew who was going to walk in like one day this guy walks in and goes can i sign he asked to sign our dressing room wall keith morris from the circle jerks alex chilton came this in signed the wall she didn't even hardly know who he is. Gary Oldman yes. came in and si he signed a postcard. But we were just amazed, you know. Like, and it was still little, like when the Red Hot Chili Peppers came in the store. Right. They weren't that well known. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a you know hot time in Columbia that night. But well, history is built on such moments. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. His, his story. His story. 
Um, and then from there to Charlotte. Yes. Yes, then we went to Charlotte in 1990. And then Asheville yeah, as a partnership, and Charleston under our own name, and then Wilmington. Okay. And then St. Andrews in Columbia. And finally in yeah. Gilbert. South Carolina. Yeah, talk about y'all had a y'all had a store in Gilbert. Yes. Wow. <laughs> but we named it Community Chest. Okay. It was just really all of our overstock, and we live out there now. The okay. Kids, the kids loved it because they didn't have anything like sure. that. Sure. God, yeah. kids would drive up on a tractor well, after working in the field and come by. You know, That's incredible. Skate stuff. Mostly it was at the skater time, so it was the skater stuff. Sure. But sure. every store had a different flavor and a different group of people. It was amazing. When when I first started the store, it was modeled after a store in California called the Electric Chair. And they were at downtown Huntington Beach. And they carried Doc Martin boots and creepers and belts and t-shirts. It was those lines that we got it was the beginning designers and these were punk rock t-shirts that everybody wants you know that's how far back we were carrying punk rock t-shirts wow yeah so so let me ask you this you guys have dedicated your lives to punk rock and to promoting DIY and alternative culture what motivates you to do it because it's not easy no it's not I was saying earlier I, we can't imagine any other way it's just the way our brain's wired, and we're grateful for that. Yeah. Even though, you know, sometimes you feel like you went down a dead end or something, and you do. But tenaciousness and resilience will get you a long way, you know? And, I mean, there was no way that, you know, you could beat our job because everybody <laughs> wanted it. <laughs> That's right. To this day, when we uh, tell the story to people, they're like, I want to be you <laughs> because that was... The coolest, you know, that was just the coolest you could, you could do. It was always fun. Anytime yeah, yeah. I was with you guys, it yeah. was fun. Whether yeah. it was at a show, working for the, you. You know, the envy of everybody that's got a job. It's like, get, look, look it what is you the get coolest to do. Job. It's like being in a band, you know. It is, thing. yeah. You're getting paid to be punk. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. How many people can get paid to be punk? Yeah. And, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and travel to New York and right. California and all over. So, Moving into modern times for all of us, and we're all still in the game. If people want to come see you, where are you guys going to be next with the Punk Rock Flea Market Circuit? Well, Pop up. Just this month, we'll be in Durham next weekend, back Charlotte. in Charlotte for a, a nightclub reunion, and then uh, Richmond, Virginia, then the month. So that's going to be Durham on February 11th. 11th. Mm -hmm. And then Charlotte on uh, February 16th. February 16th. One night. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, Richmond, Virginia, the last weekend, whatever. It is. And then then there's Savannah and Greenville and all the other Columbia mm -hmm. even. Columbia. If they look at Southeast Punk Flea Market on Instagram okay. or Facebook, yeah. Yeah. you'll get the schedule. Yeah. It's a this traveling is, circus. Yeah. So that Southeast <laughs> Punk Flea Market on Instagram. Do a lot of the vendors travel together? Do y'all know a lot of these yeah, folks? Yeah, we know them all. <laughs> yeah, the cool but there's ones. about 20 okay. that are core that do yeah. them all. Yeah, okay. they're really cool people. The rest are regional. In fact, they're, they're an extension of what we did. That's They know who we are and they know um, how this works. And they are out there and they're carrying on, like the holding the torch, you know what I mean? We're just doing it because we get to tell stories and, you know, <laughs> people need what we have. We're the only ones who can get some of the stuff that these kids right. want. And, um, but they are doing such a good job at, at get, giving the new people the new look, at, which changes every, you know, millimeter, what do they call it, a millisecond or whatever. Right. Fashion yeah. changes a lot. I mean, just sit here and watch the people, the individuality, yeah. uh, you know, the uniqueness. This is not, uh, this is a, a gathering of the tribes. It is. And the merchandise selection, you know, it's just, a, it's very, uh, you know, uh, affirming you're like yes this is all right when i got here before i connected with you guys today i was shooting b-roll and i noticed the diversity of merchandise available but everybody kind of has their own flavor to, mm -hmm. to or theme really mm -hmm. to what they're doing and immediately i call sherry and go honey this is superiority on steroids. You got to come to the next one. And so. it's the attitude of the people here. They, not only do they have a lot of camaraderie between each other and some competition, right. but they're all open-minded and 
cool, uniquely uh, talented. Relatable. Right. What a gathering of people, you know. Well, it's like a regeneration. Yeah. I gotta show yeah. you. Oh, this you're being picture. prompted oh, yeah, there by. Oh. This uh, picture I took the other day. You've got to answer this one, not to one. Eight dollars. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this is your song in a picture. I just got to find it here. We were, you know, talk. She was talking to a, a girl that's become our friend, and there was a young girl in our booth, and she just started talking to the middle girl, oh, and so yeah. all the, here they are. Okay, you already showed them. But you know, here's Carolina was talking to her friend who's beautiful and, and tall, and the little girl just said, "Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful." Three generations, you know, yes. there as one <laughs> little thing. You can flash that picture. Oh, that'd be great. I'm gonna send yes. it to you. That that sounds wonderful. Well, speaking of regeneration, that, that's the whole thing here. The, I, I wanted to thank you for the impact that you've had on my life, because you guys, you mean the world to me and to a lot of people in South Carolina and really all over the world. Uh, but I wanted to present with you guys today um, our uh, latest record, and it's signed. And it says to Caroline and Keith, oh, with love. Thank you. We want a billion dollars. Wow, yeah, because I love it. being with you guys oh, is yeah. way better than winning a billion dollars. No. It is. So sweet. <laughs> We're going to need a bedlam hour instead of for 15 minutes of bedlam. <laughs> hey, well, we can do a part two. But Good. I wanted to thank you guys again for, for uh, allowing me to come down here and do this. And looking forward to all the great things you guys have in store uh, with everything going on with the punk rock yeah, we're kind of we're kind of winding it down <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're not actually going to pick it up at this point but you, you get what you get you know it's so fun right now we've got this going on you know of course we have our family but with y'all reforming and playing again and meeting some uh, daryl cook down I mean, in yes. Beach, and he's got his shows going on i'm like Things haven't really changed that no, much. No, they yeah, haven't really yeah. changed. And it's been so amazing to see people I haven't seen in 30, 40, 41 years. And the people that stayed with it. You yes. Know? Yeah. 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 It's great. Like, yeah, yeah, I wanted to mention it. It was <coughs> the employees at Superior Feet that made that store. You know, they were the ones that um, ran it. They had the image, you know. People came and hung out with them. It was really important that they, you know, were as big a part of it and still we all know all of them you know it's like they all just went in the best directions you know chris is here one of the guys that worked for us is right here um you know Our extended family yeah uh, <laughs> every one of them you're seeing uh, brian and, and, and ed the other night you know and scott so um you know seeing you of course it was just this is you know what your legacy right it really legacy. is Mm -hmm. It really is. And you mentioned about people being open-minded and accepting and loving. And that's one thing that all the employees always presented. They were cool, but they were approachable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. And if, if a kid yeah. came in there and, yeah. hey, just wanted to kind of know what was going on and, and, yeah. and needed advice about fashion or about music, they were always kind and, and yeah. you know, gave you know gave some information that could help people out. So, and my first Doc Martens were from there. Well, the first ones I bought. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Somebody loaned me some that didn't fit before uh, then, but I still have yeah. a pair of ducks from from those early days. Yeah, the first batch that came in, I'm like, I have to have these blue, you know, ten uh, lace, and I still have them. Well, I want to thank you guys again. Tune in next month to the next episode of Fifteen Minutes of Bedlam. Thank you so much, Keith and Carolina. Love you guys, and we'll see we you love soon. Love you too. Thank love you. you.